What's up, YouTube? It's Dakota again, back with another YouTube video. This today is Monday, uh, May 4th. And uh, just going to get into this live trading session. Go ahead and look at a few setups this morning and then get into the past two weeks' performance, or at least April's performance. So we'll all see uh, what happened, how we can improve it, and what things we should carry over into, into May. So first, let's look at the charts. Um, and I already sent out, I already sent out uh, the steps I want to pay attention to yesterday. I even sent out a few on Friday of last week. Hey, somebody got a TV in the background. All right. Um. All right. So here are the setups. Just three setups, three things I'm really paying attention to. First one is you, Chef. Got an impulse to break from this ascending channel. We're waiting for this to correct him on kill zone. Uh, once it's in there, looking for JCP to enter for that sell. GBP and ZD have an ascending channel, mainly looking for this sell and waiting for a correction, looking for it to come down. Uh, but there is a possibility that price could break that trend line, this correction continue up. So I draw, drew two. Yes, I put two scenarios on the chart <laughs> and uh, whichever one happens, uh, we'll act accordingly. And then final setup that I'm personally paying attention to, Euro USD, uh, waiting for this to correct down to this kill zone. It gets there, waiting for JCP, looking to buy. All right, and I may place multiple orders if it gives me multiple times to enter here because uh, the take profit that I've set here is below these this correction so and my extension levels for my take profits are actually higher than my tp at this moment so if i have more so if there's more opportunities to enter i'm definitely going to be taking this because there's a high profit potential out of this particular trade uh let's actually look at it this morning first one we'll look at is you chef starting the four hour yeah, so you see the setup that we want. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it now. We're just gonna wait for it to actually happen. Got our impulse down. See price is starting to correct up. So we can now properly draw our Fibonacci's. All right, cool. Fibonacci is telling me to lower this uh kills on down a little bit to that area. So looking for price to correct up to the 61.8. Let's get to the 61.8. Be looking for a JCP and then selling. The amount of pips we'd be looking for are about uh, like my PL. All so right about the previous notch level. So we have 50 pip stop loss, 100 pip take profit. Could be hit easily. So there's a setup. All right, any questions over that? That's not at all. Okay. So uh, let's break down what's happening on the weekly so we can all get the overall picture. Overall picture on the weekly time frame. We'll go weekly, daily. We'll basically do our top-down analysis. So on the weekly time frame, we have this downtrend here, and we can see on the monthly time frame, we drew supply and demand zone here. See, price has been ranging between those two areas. And uh, within those two areas, it's formed a downtrend. All right, that's pretty much all the information we have on our weekly chart. If we go down to our daily daily chart. See price recently had a rally up and then price started to have a rally down and then it's been consolidating recently. Um, and previously we saw a triangle actually form here, but last week 
leave on the eight hour, it can be a little bit clearer. Yeah, last week on the eight, eight hour, we can see that we had a ascending channel actually form. And with this ascending channel was approaching this trend line, which appears to have gone a little bit higher on the lower time frame. So approaching this trend line and with us in the channel, we, we know we're looking for reversals in these scenarios. So price had an impulsive move up, then corrected, we continue moving up. So we wait for a break, waiting for the correction, and then we're gonna be looking to enter there for our safety entry. Now price has the potential to go all the way down to this so demand zone down here, which is about 450 pips. Uh, this is, I would say the full potential, at least at the moment, and then uh, minor potential that minor potential that would be paying attention to is about to right here. This previous low that we have, which is about 170 pips right there. Okay. Um, but of course, price could continue to correctly move up, move up a little bit deeper than what we have at this moment. So price could continue to move correctly. The price moves correctively and decides to retest this pattern. We'll still be looking to re-enter. So regardless, looking for a sell this week. Uh, no buy opportunity until price actually breaks this trend line. Or at least I will not be taking a buy opportunity until price breaks that trend line. Uh, all right, let's go to the next pair, GBP NZD. Incorporating the same pattern but on a different pair. Okay, so higher time frame, we see price has given us an impulse here. We got this huge correction here, and this supply zone essentially acts as a kill zone for the people that know my strategy. Uh, you can see how all that flows together. So we know on a higher time frame, looking for a large potential for this to go down, or we have a high probability that this is gonna go down based upon our setups or based upon our confirmations. I don't know why I'm mixing up my words today. Um, okay, then we have this uptrend on the daily time frame. It's been, this uptrend has been in effect since July, 2019. Um, so, and recently we've had an impulse and prices correcting to this trend line, but notice the area where prices started to correct would hit this uh, supply zone and also hit the top of the channel that we are at. So this is the area of price most likely to actually reverse. And the move that I actually wants to happen out of this or that I've been wanting to happen for a long time now is price to break this trend line, give us correction and continue down. Uh, at least to the bottom of the channel, which is about 1400 pips. But, um, Actually, it hasn't happened yet, but in the back of my mind, waiting for price to break this trend line, give me an opportunity to move down. Let's go ahead and go to the eight hour. Reset the chart. On the eight hour, whoa. the eight hour, there's nothing too interesting or nothing too interesting to add. On the four hour, however, we have an impulse to move up and we have this ascending channel here and we can see price been broken, the ascending channel, waiting for price to correct up to this kill zone. And then we're looking to sell there. So the opposite of the one hour. I think the next time frame to watch for this is actually on the one hour time frame. Looking for a continuation pattern to form. And let's see what FIB level this is. There it is at 38.2. We take it from here, it is the 50. So regardless, it's a good for the notch level. No move, reason to really move the kills on the dollar right now. So price gets up to there, looking for JCP on the 15 minutes. And we enter first sell. That is ridiculous. I'll go above the previous.
Alright. That looks easy. I need to say wait for JCP here. Again, here's our impulse, waiting for this correction. Price gets there, looking for our opportunity to enter. Any questions over this pair? Uh, next pair we're going to go over is your USD. All right, so on the eight hour, oh, um, we'll start on the monthly, do our full top down analysis. That's crazy. When, oh, okay, okay, I see. All right, so I have two lines here because I'm over time frame. Didn't see my demands out, so I just drew a new one instead of moving the bottom one up. But essentially on a monthly time frame, we have this supply zone here. We have demand zone here. And you can think of it as an area, those two lines, essentially create an area. Um, and we know we've been in this descending channel for a long time. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and delete. Let's delete everything and just remark it up because I had some practice stuff on there. All right, there's a supply zone. There's a supply zone. There's a demand zone. Okay. That's essentially all we're doing on the monthly time frame, going down to the weekly time frame. Yeah, and this was the area where I actually drew it. Uh, I don't really want to draw anything over right here right now. Let's go to the daily. I actually want this right above here. And to simplify, so next time I'll come back, I don't get confused. I'm just going to simply move that up. See, we have a impulse on the daily time frame, potentially a correction, but it's not, hasn't formed a true pattern yet. So not going to look for that sale at the moment. Our previous trend that we've had drawn was here over the last few weeks. I should then take it from here. And we can see that price has broken that trend line. Possibility for a little buy. Uh, I'm gonna pay attention to this high here just to, uh, for price to reverse potentially. And, but again, not gonna be looking for the sale because we are, are in a, what are those things called? I know it, I know the answer. We are in a descending channel on the weekly and monthly time frame. So, Long term, we're looking for price to actually go long. This eight hour, reset this. Okay, and find our setup. So price has broken the trend line impulsively. We're waiting on correction to come down. Where do we want the correction to come down to? Wanted to come down to the kill zone. Our kill zone is about right here in this area. We're just acting on previous areas where price has struggled. If you don't trust that area, we can go ahead and double click it. The negative sign in front of one, add zeros, then look left. Essentially what this is, is just supply and demand, I mean support and resistance. That's beautiful. I'll solve that area perfectly. Over here, we can see it's reacted to this area before, respected it. Respected it, 
to the downside and to the upside as well. Same here, same here. There are so many touches here, so many confirmations telling me that this is a strong area where price uh, typically reverses or struggles at. And that's exactly the area that I want to enter at. So waiting for price to correct down to this area. Uh, put that there. Wait. Okay, and this is going to be the updated version of the initial PL that I sent out. So I just restarted the market. Nothing should change too much. Okay, keeping it to the one, essentially risking 50, going for 100 pips. And I believe, as I said before, if there's multiple opportunities here, going to be entering multiple opportunities to enter within the kill zone. Okay, so those are three pairs I'm paying attention to this week. I'm going to take uh, advantage of those, try to get a 5% gain out of those three pairs for this week. Um, but let's go ahead and see. Dakota, what was the first pair before the G GP and Z and Z we looked at? Uh, you, Chef. You, okay. you, Chef. You, Chef. All right. Yeah, and they're all on the Discord channel. Yeah, I got to talk to you about that offline. All right, I got you. Um, all right, so now let's get into reviewing what happened last week or what happened in April. I don't know why I said last week. So over on last week, we had a great last month. Got it. Overall, last month, we had a great month. Uh, we started out really, really strong, which really set us up to maintain our profits for the entire uh, for the entire month. At the beginning of the month, we hit our take profit of the first week of last month. We hit it, we had to take profit of 1951 or pips. Here we go. We caught almost 2,000 pips in the first week of April, which really set us up for April. We didn't really have to trade after that. This, if you think of this in percentages, we had a huge percentage, percentage uh, uh, hit, right? My personal target every single week is 5%. And if I'm catching um, about 1,000 pips within a week, I'm definitely hitting over my 5% goal in that particular week. And really sets me up for the rest of the month to not really worry about hitting my targets the following weeks. At that point, it's just a challenge. So that was a great, great week. Um, and those were over uh, not too many pairs. That's in DeForest analysis. Uh, you can go all the way up and check all those pairs that happened throughout that week. And that was the week of That was April 10th, 2020, the week before that. Okay, and then the following week after that, we caught 257 pips, which is very, very unusual because over the past two, almost three months so far, we've been catching about uh, 1,400 to 2,000 pips on average uh, every single week. So here I was just saying, okay, we kind of dipped in performance, nothing too bad, obviously still profitable. 
and then and then the next week after that we lost 150 pips which was just another losing week or it was just our first losing week as far as pips go right because Pips, whether it's positive or negative, does not actually relate to or directly uh, isn't directly the causation for percentage gain or loss, right? Because you can earn, there are people that can earn 100 pips but lose 2% on their account. There are people that can lose 100 pips but gain 2% uh, on their account. The following week or last week, we actually caught only 62 pips and didn't send out too many trades this week. I believe I sent out three or maybe four trades or four setups. Uh, so there wasn't too many uh, pips to actually add together on that. But essentially, the reason or yes, the reason that I saw this dip in performance, or at least what I've analyzed personally, are things that have happened in my personal life, right? That have taken a lot more time out of my day, so I don't spend as much time on the charts as I usually do. I don't track my trade. I wasn't tracking my trades as I usually, as I usually am. I wasn't um, entering multiple times on multiple opportunities as I usually do on, my, uh, on these opportunities. And I did not account for the time that I would be away from the chart to actually place a proper trade for why I'm not looking at my chart, right? Because I could enter a day trade and that day trade could reverse on me, but I'm not looking at the chart, so I don't see the reversal pattern to exit the trade. So if I'm away from my chart, I will have to set a trade that can actually prevent me, essentially have a trailing stop for when price gets to a certain point, I'm break even. Uh, I'm break even or insert trade or setup that actually is higher probability based off of higher time frames, so that I don't have to look at the chart as often or set alerts as often as I uh, usually do. Does that make sense, guys? Or should doesn't even clear something up along that? Yeah, it does. Okay. So I would say that very reason was the reason for the plus 257 pip. Uh, plus 257 and minus 150 pips. The week after that, I would say would be more psychological. Because after... After having two weeks of lower performance than what I'm used to, I suffered a little bit psych psychologically, and I definitely noticed that, I believe, last week on Tuesday, Wednesday, probably Wednesday morning. And let me go ahead and mute. Okay, so with that, after I realized that I decided to stop trading, that's why I didn't send out many moves last week, and um, and how I saw this was basically I was being impatient or going for impatient moves. Wasn't waiting for the real setup. I was going to the lower time frames and uh, essentially rushing it. And the higher time frame would contradict my lower time frame setup, which would lead to my SL getting hit or my move actually never setting up. So. Higher time frames are very, very vital. If you don't pay attention to them, you could move couldn't set up or may not set up or your move may not even be valid. Because higher time frames contradict what happens on the lower time frames, and that's something to be to pay attention to. So uh, definitely having a clear head going into the charts is very, very important. So making the making those slight adjustments. Uh, we'll see if we have improvement and get our win rate back up to about 70%. Uh, I believe last few weeks has been around 30, 
34, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Last week was definitely 34%. Uh, guesstimating over the past two weeks has about been about 40. But I want to get that back above 50 and see if we can do better. All right, so any questions about that or any um, things that you guys want to personally bring up on that topic? All right, all right, so Appreciate you guys for listening. I hope this does help. And if you guys do have any uh, comments or suggestions that you guys want to make, go ahead and comment in the comment section. If you want to get added to this Discord channel, click the link in the description. Uh, you'll be you'll see the welcome and announcement page. Please, 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 please read the welcome page. You're gonna miss out on a lot of content if you do not read it. Uh, fill out this survey and then click this react button so you can get added to the deforest analysis, see the setups I uh, send out every single week, get added to the chat, basically communicate with everyone that is in this server. And also what I call trade watchers where you can lock questions with people inside of the group. All right. Also have information for you guys uh, as far as guides, to this server training and learning resources that help me. They're all free learning resources that help me learn how to trade uh, when I was first starting off. But I will catch you guys on Wednesday in the midweek update. Hope everyone has a great week. Thank you, hey, Dakota. You just answered my question, so I don't have to holler at you offline, but thanks. <laughs>